Friedrich Miescher Laboratory in Tübingen is an institution of the Max Planck Society. The physician Friedrich Miescher is the patron of the institution founded in 1969. At the University of Tübingen he discovered the genetic material in living organisms in the 19th century and became a pioneer of modern biology. The findings of the theory of heredity form the backbone of the four international research groups working at the Friedrich Miescher Laboratory in Tübingen, which deal with issues of modern genetics. State-of-the-art equipment meets the irrepressible research drive of the young scientists working here, who ensure a lively scientific exchange on joint projects. But this was not always so. One of the key challenges in the late 1960s was that more and more researchers in Germany were leaving the country to pursue careers abroad. To counteract this trend, the aim was to create structures and development opportunities for young researchers that were at least equal to those in other countries. It had to be possible to conduct research free of hierarchy and thematic constraints, and young scientists were to be able to fully exploit their professional potential in self-governing research groups. The Max Planck Society became a pioneer in Europe. Among its many members are well-known names, such as Christiane nüsslein vollhardt who was awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine for her research on the genetic control of embryonic development. Wir haben losgelegt und wir haben sehr, sehr effizient forschen können, ohne uns um andere Sachen kümmern zu müssen. Die Selbstständigkeit war schon unglaublich wertvoll. Und viele Stellen gab es nicht von dem Typ. Und ich war sehr glücklich, dass ich die hier kriegen konnte. Ich hatte allein das Recht, Leute zu, zu einzustellen und mit denen zu arbeiten. Und wir hatten einen zugewiesenen Platz und wir konnten das einteilen, wie wir wollten. Wir hatten eine sehr große Freiheit. And we have all can. Neurobiologist Heinz Wessler recalls numerous findings that began at the Friedrich Miescher Laboratory in the 1970s. They have had a lasting impact on basic medical research. In erster Linie steht natürlich Frau Nüsslein Vollhardt, die Nobelpreisträgerin, aber zum Beispiel Sachen, die nicht so bekannt sind in der Öffentlichkeit, zum Beispiel die Arbeitsgruppe von Reinhard Kurt. Reinhard Kurt wurde dann Präsident des Paul-Ehrlich-Institutes und nachfolgend Präsident des Robert-Koch-Institutes. Also zwei ganz entscheidende Positionen in der medizinischen Forschung in Deutschland. Weiterhin ein Mitarbeiter, Johannes Löber, wurde dann auch Präsident des Paul-Ehrlich-Institutes. Das heißt also, das Friedrich-Miescher-Labor hat nicht nur an Universitäten oder in die Max-Planck-Gesellschaft ausgestrahlt, sondern auch eben in Institutionen, die enorm wichtig sind für die deutsche Gesundheitsforschung. Meanwhile, the laboratory has eight successful generations of researchers and 34 research groups. The structures of the institute, modernized for the needs of the 21st century by executive director Andre Lupas, now address questions about molecular mechanisms in evolution. Die Gründungsidee war, den Zwischenraum zwischen der Assistentenstelle und der ersten Professur zu überbrücken und vielversprechenden jungen Wissenschaftlern zu ermöglichen, ihre Forschung ungebrochen weiterzuführen in einer Periode großer Unsicherheit in ihrer Karriere. Es war also der Versuch, eine wirkliche Brücke zu schaffen. Headed by Patrick Müller, his research group focuses on the self-organization of cells during the embryonic phase. He wants to find out how cells manage to coordinate and organize themselves through pathways of regulated communication. In meiner Forschungsgruppe wollen wir herausfinden, wie aus einem Zellhaufen ein ganzer Embryo entsteht. Und dafür untersuchen wir insbesondere Wachstumsfaktoren, die von den anfangs sehr ähnlichen Zellen ausgeschüttet werden, durch den Embryo wandern und dann an Rezeptoren, an spezifische Rezeptoren auf der Oberfläche von Zellen binden und dort bestimmte Gene anschalten, die letztlich für die Ausbildung bestimmter Zelltypen, Gewebe und Organe zuständig sind. One of his latest research projects deals with a more precise clarification for the development of diseases such as cancer. He is interested in which signaling and communication processes between cells are responsible for the development of tumors and how this chain can be specifically disrupted. Wir wollen entwicklungsbiologische Prozesse so genau verstehen, dass wir sie am Computer nachbilden können, um letzten Endes 
künstliche Wachstumsfaktoren und vielleicht sogar künstliche Gewebe herstellen zu können. Und dafür arbeitet meine Forschungsgruppe stark interdisziplinär. Von der klassischen Entwicklungsbiologie bis zu moderner Biochemie und computergestützten Berechnungen. Another research group, that of Felicity Jones, continues to the research tradition of Christian and his line for heart. It is primarily concerned with the mechanisms of transmission of suppression and of genetic information. Our overall aim is to understand which mutations in the genome influence an individual's fitness and enable that individual to survive in different environments. A recent publication by Felicity Jones addressed the question of which traits are why and how genes in living things can change due to environmental influences and thus change their species in subsequent generations. Um, and we ask how that uh, variation influences an individual's phenotype um, as well as the ability of the organism to survive and adapt in different environments. So, so we have previously shown that, um, that the non-coding genome plays an important role in the adaptation of uh, organisms to the environment and in particular cis regulation of gene expression seems to be particularly important. And so what we are currently doing is using um, epigenomic and genomic techniques to functionally annotate the regulatory genomes of fish that have adapted to different environments in order to understand how the regulatory genomes differ but also influence the phenotype and the ability of the organisms to adapt to the environment. Her husband, Frank Chan, is doing science right next door. His research group deals with quite technical issues of heredity. Among other things, he works with computer models and uses modern technology to simulate which characteristics can be formed or suppressed between different generations of living beings by switching on and off genetic information. Yeah, in our group we are very interested in how the genome works and one of the core questions of development of biology is that every single, nearly every single cell in your body has the same genome. On the other hand, they don't look alike, you know, you have more than 200 different cell types in the body. So it's not so much about what genome you have, but rather how do you interpret, how do you read it. And a lot of this has to do with DNA gene switches, so you know, segments of the DNA that turns on or off um, gene expression. He gives us one example. He has just published on the topic in an internationally renowned journal. Well, so one of these things that we have done in the lab, uh, these methods we have developed, um, we call in vitro recombination or in vitro crosses, is one where you take cells from the body, in this case embryonic stem cells from mice, but also can be from a person, um, and we can shuffle and exchange the genome. And by tracking what those cells do, it will allow you to figure out which part of the genome really controls what. And so there may be scenarios where people can take patients that are suffering from a particular illness, but they don't really know which one of the DNA changes affect this illness. Haven't we ever wondered why siblings sometimes differ considerably from each other and sometimes hardly at all? The answer to this has John Weir, because he has been researching for several years on processes why and above all in what proportion certain hereditary information of parents predominate and others do not come into play at all. Die haben 50% von unseren äh, Chromosomen, unserem Genom kommt von äh, jedem Elternteil. Aber was ist interessant ist, ist, welche Prozent wir bekommen von unseren Großeltern. Weil das ist nicht 25, 25, 25, sondern das wird in El unsere Eltern neu vermischt. Und das heißt, wir bekommen vielleicht von ein Großeltern mehr oder weniger und es wird auch in andere Kombinationen gemacht. Für uns im Moment das ist es äh, Hefeprotein von Barkhefe. Aber diese Proteine, die funktionieren äh, in, in Menschen, in Säugetiere, die sind sehr, sehr ähnlich. Äh, und unser nächster Schritt wäre dann, die komplizierte äh, Säugetiersystem auch zu isolieren und zu studieren, um zu schauen, vielleicht welche Konsequenzen das hat für die Fruchtbarkeit äh, und auch für Gesundheit. As an integral part of the Max Planck Institute established at the Tübingen campus, the Friedrich Miescher Laboratory has its place for over 50 years. In the future, there should be many more opportunities for young junior research groups. Es darf nicht Programmforschung entstehen. 
Das war vielleicht die wichtigste Einsicht des Misha, die absolut essentielle Rolle der wissenschaftlichen Freiheit bei der Entwicklung des Misha-Laboratoriums. Und das ist die absolute Grundlage für ein zukünftiges, größeres Laboratorium. Es muss die Unabhängigkeit und wissenschaftliche Freiheit der Gruppen absolut und bedingungslos garantiert sein. Evolution seems to be assured. We will stay curious.